West African writing system. There are many West African writing systems. These writing systems reflect the extent of literacy among West Africans when they met Europeans in 1492. It is a myth that Africans lack literacy. Africans usually base their writing systems on the ancient Danite script used by African people before the founding of ancient Egypt. Danite was prior to the script of the Proto-Saharans. East and West Africans continue to use traditional writing systems especially in their secret societies. The vast majority of writing systems in West Africa are found among the Mandi-speaking people. The Mambara speakers, for example, use the Masaba system of writing. The major African writing systems include Loma, Capelli, Mende, Vai, and a Wolof system of writing. All of these writing systems are found in West Africa. The Mandy writing systems share many identical signs with the same sound value. Some European researchers have assumed that African writing systems were invented in imitation of Europeans who were using the alphabet. This theory is false. The existence of hundreds of inscriptions from the Fasan in Libya up to the Niger Valley dating back to chariot times provide testimony to the antiquity of writing in West Africa. Writing in West Africa is at least 7,000 years old. The oldest writing used by West Africans was Thinite, or Proto-Saharan script. Thinite was a syllabic writing system. The first syllabic writing system of Africans was the Thinite script. This writing was used first during the Mach civilization. It was later taken in Nubia and used by the Niger Congo people who migrated out of this region into the rest of Africa. The Thinite script provides many of the signs are included in later scripts used by West Africans. This writing was first used in the Ma Confederation. The Ma Confederation was formed by people who had originally belonged to the Unanian civilization, was extended from Middle Sahara up to North Africa. Most of the people of Ma were centered in the Saharan highlands. In history, the citizens of Ma were called Kushites. After the Great Flood between 3500 and 4000 BC, the Proto-Saharans left the highlands and began to settle the lowlands up to the Nile Valley, Mesopotamia, and other parts of Eurasia. These areas were formerly strongholds of the Anu people. The Anu, they had mining and trading centers stretching from Egypt into Eurasia and the Americas. The Anu are the people we call pygmies today. The Anu used two writing systems in Mesopotamia, cuneiform, and in Egypt, hieroglyphics. In Nubia, West Africans were using thinite symbols before the rise of Egypt to record their ideas and report on important events. The Proto-Saharans used thinite as a model for the Indus Valley, Libico Berber, Omec, Proto-Saharan, Proto-Sumerian, Linear Elamite, and Minoan, or Linear A. Using five symbols, I have been able to decipher all of these writing systems. I discuss this in my book, Archaeological Decipherment of Ancient Writing Systems. The Sumerians and the Rappans of the Indus Valley were Kushite. Their civilization originated in Nubia. This is why they share the same writing system. The ancient Sumerians, before they adopted the cuneiform writing invented by the Anu of Mesopotamia, wrote tablets in the Uruk script. It is obvious that the first inscriptions were engraved in stone by the Proto-Saharans, or styluses used to engrave wet clay. The use of a stylus or stick to engrave clay is most evident in the pottery marks found on the pottery excavated at many ancient sites, which possess similar symbols impressed on the pottery, symbols which go back to the Thinite writing. Pro-Saharans left many inscriptions in the Sahara. They include the Seat Stella and Gebel Sheikh Suleiman inscription. Nicholas Mazardis argues that these signs are really heretic, but they are not heretic. 
they are Thinite. This is obvious when we compare the Amman inscription and the Seth inscription. Look carefully at these two pictures and you will see the signs are not alike. There's another inscription written at the night from Gibel Sheikh Suleiman. This uh, inscription is usually not published because it's over the boat on the uh, inscription. But what it says is this, thou family habitation, hold it upright. Raise the status on the shore of the water car. Cut thou sepulcher habitation for the family here. They preferred to be obedient to the order, lay low the celebrity in the large hemisphere tomb, and offer up libations that merit upright virtue. Pure righteousness is King Fay. This King Fay of Gibo Sheikh Suleiman may relate to Pharaoh Pehor, the throne of Horus, since the African languages F and P are often interchangeable. It's interesting to note there is an inscription on a storage jar from Cemetery L of Hustal in Nubia that reads Pay Hor. This Pay Hor may be the fate of the Gebel Sheikh Suleiman inscription. The descendants of Proto Saharans used this script after they migrated out of the Sahara. This uh, script was uh, used to make, make many inscriptions. It is probably the uh, original uh, script that was used to uh, make the uh, so-called heretic script of the Egyptian. This view is supported by the fact that the term for writing in the Pro-Saharan languages was formed by the initial consonants L, R, or D. A U, a U is usually attached to the initial consonant. For example, we can see Sumerian, Rushu, Elamite, Talu, Dravidian, Karu, and Egyptian, Dor. These terms agree with the landing term for excavate or hollow out. Du, Do, Okulu, and Turu. The Sumerian term for writing was Du. This shows that the Proto-Saharan term for writing denoted the creation of impressions on wet clay and hard rock. The origin of writing among the Proto-Saharans is an activity involving the engraving of stone. It's most evident in the Egyptian language. This hypothesis is supported by the Egyptian word medit. The term medit means both sculptor's chisel and papyrus roll or book. The multiple meanings of medit makes it clear that the Egyptians and probably other descendants of the Proto-Saharan saw a relationship between engraving stone and the creation of books. Other Egyptian lexical items also support the important role Proto-Saharan saw in engraving rocks and writing. In addition to Medit, we have Hit, carved sculpture, and Hit, writing. The fact that Hit in Egyptian is an old kingdom term for writing, almost identical to Hit, is further evidence that writing involved the engraving of stone. Then I was used to make many African writing systems. As a result, it was later used by Africans to write inscriptions throughout Middle Africa before the Sumerians migrated from Middle Africa to Mesopotamia. The evidence of this writing is found throughout the Sahara. By the time many speaking people settled Dr. Chi, they left numerous inscriptions. The people of Dr. Chi were Mandi speakers. The Mandi speaking people also lived in the Fezzan in what we call modern Libya today where they were called Garamantes or Garamandis. The Garamantes also settled Crete and are recognized as the Etiocretans or Minoans. As you can see from the above chart, linear A signs and Mandi Mandi signs are identical. If you look carefully, you will note that Africans or black people had also taken their writing system to Anatolia. Because of the Thinite origin of writing in Africa, African writing systems used in East and West Africa usually share many identical signs. The Thinite origin of writing in Africa is evident when we compare Vi and Thay Mutic. The Vi script is a writing system used by the Mandi speaking people. The symbols related to Vi was used to write the Libical Berber inscriptions and signs posted throughout 
the Sahara along the chariot route that led from the Fazan in Libya to the Niger Valley. The Zaymunic writing system was used in Ethiopia and Arabia. This writing was used to record the Semitic language. Here you can see a picture where we compare the Vi and Thamunic signs. As you can see, there are many cognate Vi and Thamunic signs. The fact that Thamunic and Vi have similar symbols and sounds for these letters make it clear that the writing system separated by thousands of miles probably originated from the same ancestral script. That script we call Danite. The Minoans who were Africans introduced linear A to Cree. The Minoan signs are identical to the writing left by Africans throughout the Sahara, like those found at Tachik and presently represented in the Bai and several other West African scripts. The Minoan script also shares signs with Akberi Akhemi. Akberi Akhemi is a Nigerian writing system. The majority of West Africans formerly lived in the Sahil, Niger, Fazan, and the Nile Valley. At the 500 BC, with the fall of Egypt, West Africans, especially Niger Congo speakers, spread throughout the Sahil into West Africa, up to the Atlantic Ocean. Other African groups, such as the Yoruba, migrated from the Levant into West Africa. Yes, many people, such as the Yoruba, and maybe some Asante tribes, had also formerly lived in what we call Palestine today, or ancient Israel. The hypothesis of the ancestral homeland of the Proto-Mandi, or Saharan Highlands, best explains their migration routes into the Niger Basin, Northwest and West Africa in general. This hypothetical migratory route for the Mandi is supported by the diffusion of Saharan pottery styles, dating from 2500 to BC, from the southern Sahara to the inland Niger Delta. The presence of numerous inscriptions in West Africa from the Fazan to Niger Valley highlights the literacy of ancient West Africans and explains why so many writing systems continue to exist in this area. It's very interesting that much of the uh, writing of West Africa, at least the ancient writing, is associated with horse ri horseback riding and chariot riding. Horseback riding originated in Africa, it appears. At Bohim, one of the major fortresses of Nubia, which served as the headquarters of the Egyptian Viceroy of Kush, a skeleton of a horse was found lying on the pavement of a Middle Kingdom rampart. This is only 25 years after the Hyksos had conquered Egypt. The Kushites appear to have rode the horses on horseback instead of chariot. It also shows that the horse is already a familiar item among the people who lived in Upper Egypt. In association with horses and chariots, we often find writing. These examples of writing suggests that the Kushites have been, doing, been riding horses for an extended period of time for them to be able to attack Bohin on horseback. This supports the early habit of Africans riding horses as depicted in the rock art. This tradition was continued throughout the history of Kush. The Kushites and Upper Egyptians were great horsemen, whereas the Lower Egyptians usually rode the chariot. The Kushite cavalry of the 25th dynasty usually rode on horseback. It is clear from the numerous West African writing systems that have existed in the region for at least 3,000 years. This view is supported by the Uet Murtotek inscription from West Africa dating back to the Chariot Age, which is dated to 1200 BC. Although inscriptions were engraved or painted on rocks throughout West Africa, Europeans failed to see evidence until the 1800s and early 1900s of West Africans having their own writing system. As a result, researchers believe these writing systems were created in response to European literacy. This view is false, as proven by a comparison of West African scripts, which share many signs. These shared signs all relate to the Thinite signs. This may explain why West African tribes have tribal signs that are cognate to Thinite and Vi signs. 
So the Druka have been separated from West Africa for 300 years. Yet the signs and writing systems are cognate to symbols and so-called recently created writing systems. This is proof that the writing systems of West Africa, like the Druka, are pre-European in origin. As you can see, the Dejuka script is related to West African scripts, such as Vi and Bamun. Whereas in East Africa, writing was openly practiced, in West Africa, writing was maintained by West African secret societies. This is evident in the cover story used by Bukili, the alleged creator of the Vi writing system. This story of Bukili is a myth because Delacroix had recorded the Vi tradition of an ancient origin of Vi writing. The Mandi-speaking people have never stopped writing in their ancient script. It appears that the Mandi are keeping alive use of the script in secret societies, like the Poro secret society in West Africa. There is considerable evidence that the Vi writing was invented millennia before 1820. This view is supported by the present signs analogous to the Vi script being found on rocks from the Pazan to the Niger Valley, and beyond that make up the corpus of Vi script. Below is an ancient Saharan inscription. Some archaeologists claim it's 3,000 years old. This inscription from Ued Murtatek contains many symbols we find in the Vi Salabri, which provides a key to reading the thousands of inscriptions engraved on rocks throughout the Sahil, Sahara in West Africa. The Mandi speaker The Mandi speakers, before they adopted Islam, worshipped the god Emma. This god Emma was probably the Mandi name for the god Amam, Amun, Amun of the Egyptians. The Vibe writing has been in continuous use for thousands of years. The Vibe writing is one of the diverse writing systems used by Mandi speaking people in West Africa. The Vibe script gives us an understanding of phonemic values of the so called Libico Berber symbols. Libico Berber writing is nothing more than a variant form of the original Mandi writing represented best by the Vi signs. The Mandi and their migration for, from the Fazan in Libya across the Sahara into West Africa have left us numerous inscriptions, giving us testimony to their literacy. Today, the Vi script is still being taught to a future generation of Mandi speaking youth who will continue writing this interesting script for hundreds of years to come. Controversy surrounds the invention of the Vi script. Delafosse claimed the Vi informants told him the writing system was invented in ancient times. Ex Dovia in the narrative of the expedition to the Vi country, West Africa, and the discovery of the system of writing written in 1849, claimed that the writing system was invented by Bukele in 1829 or 1839. David Derringer in the alphabet reported that there was a tradition that the writing was invented by a group of eight by. Marcel Cohan, La Grande Invention de Future Ascent Evolution, believed that the Vi writing system was not invented before the 18th century, but more probably the beginning of the 19th century. The story of Bob Bukele's dream is just a cover, used by Bukele to keep members of the Gola Poro Society from being angered by Bukele's open teaching of the Vi script. We know that the symbols associated with the Vi script existed prior to Bokele's alleged invention of the Vi writing because it was known to African slaves in Suriname. In 1936, M.J. Herskovitz and his wife on a field trip to Suriname in South America recorded a specimen of writing written by a man while he was possessed by the spirit Winky. Mrs. Howe, who examined the specimen, wrote that most of the component parts are to be found in the Salabris of West Africa, which we which we have just discussed. The British took over Suriname and ended slavery in 1799, years before Bukele alleged the invention of the Vi writing. As a result, there is no way a descendant of a Suriname maroon runaway slave could have produced the writing under possession by the spirit Winty in the, if the writing was invented by Bukele. If you read the history of Bukele's alleged invention of the Vi script, we discover that Okel Bukele Dreamt of the Vi characters, he was able to reconstruct the symbols not by deeply med meditating on the dream. Later, Dewar retired from his work as a steward and returned to his hometown, and the Vi chief chieftain also helped. But he couldn't forget the idea of having a means of writing. He asked himself, why can't we have something like this for our own Vi people? 
One night he had a vision in which he saw a tall white man who said, Dualu, come, I have a book for you and your divine people. The man in the vision then pro proceeded to show him the shapes of divine characters used in the divine writing system, according to the, uh, the story made up by Bukele. When Dualu awoke, he began to write down the characters he'd seen in his vision. Sadly, there were so many he could not remember them all. So he called together his friends and fellow elders and shared with them his vision and the characters he had written down. His fellow elders caught his excitement over time. They added more characters in place of those Dualu Bukele could not remember. This is the main giveaway that the writing existed before Dualu Bukele's alleged invention of Vi. Firstly, how could his friends and fellow elders help him recover the Vi sign? They didn't dream the dream he did. If the signs were not already invented, since these men had not had Bukele's dream. Secondly, before Bukele popularized the Vi script, he saw protection from King Fatoro of Goturu and Tianiaman for his school. The king granted protection to the inventors of the Vi script because, I quote, the king declared himself exceedingly pleased with their discovery, which, as he said, would soon rise his people upon a level with the Poros and Mandingos, who here they too have been the only book people. Bukele needed a king's support for the teaching of, in, of anyone to buy writing because the first schools set up to teach the script at Dishondu, Bandakoru, were burned down along with the Vi manuscripts found in the schools after 18 months. If Bukele had invented the Vi script as he claimed, why did he need protection for his schools? The answer is that he didn't invent the writing. He just popularized the script. The Vi script was taught in the Mandy secret societies. This is why even though the script is well known, it is cloaked in an aura of secrecy. This view is supported by the fact that when Thomas Edward Beslow, a Vi prince who attended mission schools in Liberia, and the Wesleyan Academy in Massachusetts was initiated into Poro Society, he mentioned in his autobiography that many members of the Sikh Society could write and buy. What do we learn from this report of Bukele? First, that the vice grip was known to buy elites. Obviously, members of Poro would not like non-members of society to know about the writing. Yet Bukele was teaching the Vi writing to anyone who desired to learn it. So the Vi would be recognized for their literacy just like Europeans. Secondly, it was being taught in the poorer society, which King Fatoro did not belong to. Today, even though the Vi script is well known, the writing is semi-secret. As a result, some commentators believe the Vi no longer write in the script. This led Christopher Fife in the history of Sierra Leone to write that, and I quote, though an English trader who spent some time among the Vi in the 1860s found schools where children were still learning it, it was almost forgotten by the early 20th century, and today is only studied by linguists. Fife was wrong. Gail Stewart, only five years later, in notes on the present-day use of the Vi script in Liberia, found that the script was still very popular among many Vi. David Dalby wrote about a Gola student of William Sageman, who allowed Sageman to copy the inscription, but he would not translate the same. This student attributed the writing to the Poor Society and said he was taught the writing by his grandfather. Dalby wrote, after the present paper had gone to press, Mr. William Sellerman of Indiana University gave me information on the 15th West African script used in Liberia for writing Gola. Mr. Sellerman had seen a young Gola student at Cunningham College writing a letter in, in this script in 1968. But although the student allowed him to take a copy of the letter, he declined to provide Mr. Sellerman with a key. Dalby viewed the assertion of the students that the writing was used by members of the Poro Society with skepticism. But Dalby should not have been skeptical because Beslow had made the same claim. The West African writing systems were probably already part of the West African secret societies. As a result, we find that the creators of the writing system belong to secret societies and that most of them are supposed to have acquired the ability to create the new system of writing after a dream in which God gave them permission to create the writing system. For example, in addition to Bukele, Wede, the creator of the Loma script and he invented the system of writing, had to promise not to teach it to women and respect the secret of initiation. King Njoka, who created the Bamoon script in Cameroon, 
also claimed he was inspired by a dream to create Bamoon. In conclusion, Bukele and the other so-called inventors of West African scripts probably did not invent the Bai and other writing systems. This is supported by the fact that one of the symbols associated with the Bai script were well known to members of the Poro secret society. Two, descendants of the Maroon Blacks in Suriname were familiar with the script, and three, the Bai writing for the most part remains in use, but is maintained in a semi-secret fashion and not usually shared with people who are not members or kin of members in a secret society. This is why the goal of student would not translate the letter from Mr. Sigman. Finally, it must be remembered that the symbols engraved on rocks from the Fazan and the Niger Bend and other areas where the Mandi live are identical to symbols associated with the Bai script. This shows the continuity of writing among the Bai speaking people over a period of 3,000 plus years. The ancient origin of African writing explains why the Bamoon writing system is identical to Ensibidi. The ancient origin of these writing systems explains why the Mopti signs from the Niger Valley are identical to Thinite signs. The ancient origin of writing in West Africa explains why the Dogon signs are identical to Bambara signs. This also explains why Bai and Toma are related. Further confirmation of the uh, ancient origin of writing in Africa, West Africa that is, comes from the fact that black Africans took their writing systems with them to the Americas. The first Americans to introduce writing to the Americas were the Olmec. They took writing to Mexico around 1200 BC. The first researcher to recognize the Olmec writing was, was Nandi, was Leo Viner. He wrote in Africa and discovered America on, of his discovery. He recognized that the writing on the Tuchla statuette was written in Nandi characters. We also find Nandi writing on other artifacts from ancient America. Since the discovery by Viner, we have found many examples of West African writing throughout the Americas. Many of these blacks continued to use the Bai script introduced during Omeg times, also into the Mayan period. The Bai script was also taken to America by the Malian explorers led by Abu Bakari in 1310. Abu Bakari came to America with 25,000 followers. As a result, Abu Bakari's men have left inscriptions across the Americas, from North America all the way down to Brazil. During the Atlantic slave trade, African slaves also used traditional West African writing systems to communicate with each other. For example, the Dijuka, who I believe speak a Creole language, with an Akan dialect substratum, also had their own writing system in Suriname. Herskovitz recorded the Dijuka text. K. Howe did consider research on the Dijuka script. Research done by K. Howe indicates that the script was used in Suriname prior to 1910. In summary, West African writing systems continue to be used today. They are maintained in West Africa by the West African Secret Society. Writing in West Africa is at least 4,000 years old. The writing system was based on the Proto-Saharan or Thinite script that was used by the Ma civilization in the Fazan and the southern nomes of ancient Egypt. The evidence from Suriname, symbols on the rocks near West African settlements, and the continued use by members of the Vi secret societies support Delafosse's tradition that the Vi writing existed in ancient times and that West Africans had writing systems before Europeans came to Africa. Yes, West African writing systems are varied, but they predate contact with Europeans or the Arabs. West Africans had many writing systems. 